All right, bang, bang, it's the rundown. It is uh, Wednesday, it's August 17th, live from Chicago. It's Eddie, it's White Sox Dave, it's Chief, and it's Carl, a four-person rundown. Full crew, I feel like we haven't had that in a while. Mm. I feel like it has been a while. Uh, today's rundown is brought to you by Helix Sleep. I have a Helix, boys, and it is nice. That's a brag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, Ed. <laughs> Good for you. Glad I could brag. Yeah. I no. bet you I, I bet you got $200 off your orders and because you went to helixsleep.com slash rundown. And also, Dave, if you do that, you get two free pillows on top of it. You know what? I'm in the market for new pillows, too. I might have to be checking this out tonight. There you go, because Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. Everybody's unique and everyone sleeps differently, and that's why Helix has several different mattresses models to choose from. Each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. Models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in your stomach and back sleeping positions. Plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress is a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? You just take the quiz. You take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And uh, like I said, I was matched with my perfect mattress. I mean, you look well rested. I am. Yeah. I had a nice You used to nice have sleep. those like bags on your eyes constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The butthole eyes. Yeah. The, yep. Yeah. The butthole mm -hmm. eyes. Yep. Well, uh, you don't got those no more. Because I got my Helix. Okay. Yep. Helix knows there's no better way to try out a new mattress than sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. Hmm. So one more time, like Dave said, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helix.com slash rundown with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Go do it. It's a... Uh, it's a fabulous product, okay? Uh, first topic of the day, Elon, Ma Elon Musk tweets that he is going to buy Manchester United. Uh, Chief, you're our most likely soccer guy, so we'll start with you. Yeah, he also said that he was joking, but it was like the perfect little troll because nobody hates their owners. Like, Manchester United hates their owners more than we hate ours. No, oh, that's, that's, cruel, yeah, that's not true. No. That's not true. Have you, have you in done protests every year to get the – like, they are have scheduling a protest, the entire fan base that on Tuesday. That doesn't mean they hate them more than I hate Jerry Reinsdorf. I, I think they that. do. You have not organized a strike. But that's I, – I How about they hate him as hate much? Him. No, it's more. No, it's Well, then, then they're just much more organized than you. But anyway, so well, he's not by them. Much. They did <laughs> announce today, the Glazers – First of all, they took all they did was just get a loan to buy it, and then it's like a genius. It's almost it's like a scam. So they took out a six, they got leverage. They took out six hundred million dollars to buy the team, which was from a bank, and then they're just paying the bank back with dividends that they're paying themselves because they're the uh, majority shareholder. And then they took part of the company public. Manchester, you can buy Manchester United on the New York Stock Exchange. And so now they're just like lying in their pockets while the team is literally Manchester United is literally in dead last. Dead last, 20th place. And uh, so Musk being like, because that's what everybody dreams of. Two games? Two games, but dead last. We well, lost 4-0. I mean, you throw dead last around like they It's Man I mean, Manchester the United. Manchester United and dead last do not belong in the same okay. sentence, no matter what week of the season it is. And well lose 4-0 at home or lose 4-0 against Brentford, that's, that's a bad start. Bad start, uh, and then so Brentford, like the, that's a trash program. Brent, now, too. Careful, yeah. Brentford's the Oakland Athletics of the EPL. That is true. They're oh, big, they're, they got the analytics going out there. No Forest shit. Yeah. also. That Billy way. Bean. Okay, I didn't know yeah. that. Billy Bean's out there. His Bill brother, his brother Jeffrey. Oh, Jeffrey Bean. Yeah. yeah, Nottingham Forest actually. That guy, Dane Murphy, American, studied under at Burnley. Who Billy Bean is in the ownership group, and oh, Billy Bean wow. was like, "What do you know about analytics?" He's like, "Nothing." And then he just went out and learned everything now for us. He, he watched Moneyball. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah uh, it begs the question, really: Would you want Elon Musk to buy your favorite team? Yeah. <sighs> See, I think, so. I, I, I think I, I'm like all for Elon. Whatever. Like, I wish mm -hmm. like the Twitter well, you thing went the through. Tesla. Well, but not even because of that. I'm not like a. There's like levels to Eli, Elon fanboying. For I'm sure. not like an Elon fan. I bought it because it's an economically wise move at the time. Yeah. Uh, you knew those gas prices were going yeah, up. Yeah, I, 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 I foreseen it all. Um, <laughs> Still foresaw. shouldn't have done that water tower. Whatever, dude, dude. Don't slow yes. down on that. You saw it coming. So why, why are you out on Elon as an owner? I just feel like he tweets too much. He'd be infuriating. I'm used to my owner just saying dumb dude, shit that, once a year. You can fucking once a year. Wow. With McCaskey in January. Every January is the most one of the most infuriating days mm -hmm. of my year. I would agree. And I'm just used to it once a year. I can't imagine 
living and dying on every tweet. My because thing, he just doesn't stop tweeting. My thing with Elon is that he has become a minimalist. Like, he doesn't even own a house. So, like, I don't know, even if he's worth all this money, if there's nothing in his personal life to suggest that he would spend it on the team because he's a minimalist. Unless it was a baseball team, which is different. Why? Because, like, he has a lot more flexibility. Totally, but uh, there's nothing to guarantee that he would spend it because he doesn't even own a house. Well, yeah. on the flip he's side, gonna, I he's going to Jerry give... Reinsdorf, and we know he w- doesn't spend it. So, I mean, uh, he's just a smug – he's too smug for me I like in the him. sports ownership – and, like, the fact that he said he would buy Manchester United it was a reply to a tweet about, like, you know, Republicans or, you know, whatever. No. I don't – he's just too outspoken. And to your point, Ed, there's too much trigger, and it would just be coming from nowhere. Like, you'd just get blindsided by it. He, he'd be waking he's up a and troll. say, did you hear what he – did you hear I what like Elon that, did? I like that, He's a troll. He is. Like that, you wouldn't that. want that for a team you really We're talking about owning about. the team. Why? Who gives a shit? So the only thing you want, like if you had a, like a super absent owner, like I don't. Steve like Cohen f- tweets all the time and look at the Mets now. That's got a point. Yeah, different though. I mean, How is it different? All, the only is. thing is, will Elon spend that money? And if the answer, if the answer is yes, if the, the owner's trying actively to win and he's tweeting, I'll take that. Yeah, he's exactly. an antagonizer. Yeah, I don't mind that. Who gives a shit? All he's I care a bad about boy. is... W. Sets I'd it. rather have Bezos. That's what I'm saying. Like, give me that. Give point. me a. Give me a Bezos. Um, eh, maybe not a Gates, but what about George Lucas? You're, what you're, about like the Koch brothers? Can't they? <laughs> like, one of them's dead. But don't they have a bunch of dirty money they want to spend on a baseball team? They haven't. They have money. I don't know how dirty it is, but oh. they're one of them died. I mean, you're picking like three of the most hated billionaires on the planet. As opposed yeah, to Musk, because I mean, you don't like that he tweets. No, 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 no. I'm saying as a as a fan, like those guys aren't going to be. Those guys would just buy it and then go into the shadows. They could be those guys. I would think would be more likely to be like the Glazers, who would just use it as like a cash cow and just take money out and just or be like, Ryan's we don't, we don't, or Ryan'sworth, and we don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You maybe need I'm, a guy. Maybe I'm softening my stance a bit because I would do it. He would just make this Bears move so seamless. He'd build us that tunnel. We'd be getting to that fucking stadium. Elon in two would build minutes. us a hover so? soldier field yeah. on Lake Michigan. That's I what he would so. build. It'd be sweet. It would be I sweet. Think you so. think he'd love us? You think he'd be good to us? Yeah, but then he'd be tweet like like I couldn't imagine him like this Roquan situation. He'd just be that's what I mean. Like he'd be a little snide where it'd get annoying. Like he would be tweeting like I, I think that he that. has so much going on that he wouldn't be like the Roquan thing. I don't think he would even get on his radar that much. They would just come and say, Hey, we need money and they would, he would just shell it out. Maybe. Maybe. Next uh, story here. Patrick Reed is suing the Golf Channel and Brandel Chambly. He's seeking $750 million in a defamation suit. Uh, Carl, I'll let you take this. Trying to figure out how much of that seven fifty is punitive. To, like, that's part of the damages where they say we're going to uh, – uh, you have to pay because you went above and beyond. It's, it's, it's like when Hulk Hogan bankrupted Gawker. It wasn't because – like Hulk Hogan lost out on money and they they had to pay him twenty million dollars because he was a porn star and he used his dick to work and all the stuff and he's like, Well you guys have shamed me, I can't use my dick, I can't make any money. All that that whole fucking penalty that comes down is because they wanna prove to everybody else, don't you ever do this again. You're not allowed to do this again. When those damages are on the table, it's very hard to like get into punitive damages, but when you get into punitive damages, they're through the fucking roof. Like like old environmental, but Dave's looking at me like old environmental law, like dumping toxic waste and like the stream and stuff. Like the penalties that get levied when punitive damages are are asked for are very high. So when you see seven hundred fifty million dollars, a lot of people are like, "Whoa, what a fucking!" The lawyers probably just cranking it up and being like, "Just throwing an arbitrary number." Yeah, out like they're they're doing yeah. this on purpose to get the attention and kind of build the public perception. So if you're if anybody at all is sitting around being like, "Where's their seven hundred and fifty million dollars worth of harm here?" Mm. What did they really do? That's what I was asking. So Patrick Reed is kind of like is his reputation as a scumbag. He's a very talented golfer, and he's got one of the best short games in the world, and he's one of the straightest drivers. So he is routinely in top tens and top twenties. He's also a ferocious like competitor relative to your typical PGA golfer, and he's got like a brand for the Ryder Cup that you don't fuck with this guy, and he he's just like a tough guy to beat. But a lot of players don't like playing against him because. They accuse him of cheating. It's impossible, nearly impossible to cheat on some of these events because of the cameras yeah. and how many yeah. people are there. 
He has been accused Didn't he get of kicked out of college for cheating? For cheating, yeah. But it was actually not for cheating. It was for stealing money from a teammate. He Worse. got kicked off the team. Yeah, he's got a shady checkered Be pass. careful, boys. This guy's looking to sue. We don't want to fuck it. I'm not ending up. Sure, alleged. so all of this is, is alleged. Um, Brandel Shamley is probably his most, like, they just he just shits on Patrick Reed any chance he gets. <laughs> what do we feel about Brandel Shambly? Do I think that him? I think we I think that he's an outspoken like I think he's kind of uh, I like him sometimes I don't like him other times. How about that? I okay. think he's unfair sometimes. And oh, I think I, other times you need somebody who's like you know bitching a lot. I don't like that he took my last name and made it his first name. I mean, he is a Brandel Shambly. <laughs> if you've ever seen him, I mean, Dave, Google an image of this guy. Um, Chambly. Not a lot of people like Patrick Reed. Either. Yeah. Not a lot of people like him. And oh, I, yeah. He's like, when Liv came out, he's the perfect example of why you would. He went to Liv, right? Fuck yeah. That. Like right he away. A ton would of you money. go to Liv, Ed? That's a loaded question, Dave. No, it's not. It's a yes or no question. It's a loaded question. I don't know. I'd fucking go tomorrow if you cash me that. I just don't. I, I, if I was a professional golfer, I just wouldn't know where my position would be. Like, that's different. Like, I get Tiger not going. I get these. I get the guys who didn't go. And I get the guys who do go. You know, so it's I just middleman Ed over here. That's, so that's not middleman at all. I mean, I would probably I could say that's scumbag Dave. Like no moral. <laughs> like I would like that's like that. I'm all about the big payday. <laughs> there's there's no place to hide. In this I office, think it depends yeah. what you want, and it's you know obviously case by case. But it's going to be impossible for Patrick Reed because you have to prove that they knew. Like this is defamation, so he has to prove that not only were you lying when you were talking shit about me. You knew you were lying. You were talking shit about me, and you were talking shit about me to like take me down because yeah. you don't like me, and you had malice and you had intent. Mm -hmm. So I mean, unless they've got like text messages from Randall Shambly, or they've got people that are willing to go on record with with like actual statements from Randall Shambly, or that's very plausible that that could happen. But dude, very plausible. What 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 fucking precedent are we setting if an athlete can sue? Oh yeah, and even have yeah, any yeah, damages? Yeah. Like all right, everybody in the NFL, NBA, like. Yeah, but like, can you imagine though if like someone texted like one one of uh, Dave's White Sox buddy texts him, "I want you to bury this guy." Dave would bury him in two seconds for some money. That's just, called loyalty, Ed. But you, Undying. But, but that's the point, though. Like you're perpetuating a narrative. So, but it's a it's a crazy lawsuit. Seven hundred fifty is a lot of money. I mean, if you're Patrick Reed, you you went to the live tour to get money and kind of stay out of the spotlight. He just can't help himself. <laughs> this is I can't imagine this goes anywhere other than being embarrassing for him. Yeah. Uh, next story here, Jake Paul took some BP, and uh, he didn't look great at the Yankee, before the Yankees-Marlins game. Uh, White Sox, Dave, we'll start with you. I saw the video yesterday. I'm watching it again now. That is an ugly swing, man. you got to get your back hips through it. Line up those knocking knuckles. Stay inside the baseball. He stinks. Um, it, it's, it's always shocking to me when you – like, he is a good athlete. Like, we've seen him fight. It just feels like those skills should be at least somewhat transferable. That if you're like an athlete, you should be able to at least look like you've swung a bat before. Yes, like I even if you're not making contact, contact, you should be able to like not look like the worst baseball player I've ever seen. Yes, it's like he's never picked up like, yeah. a wiffle bat even. You right. think so though? Like I would say, like if you took some of the greatest NBA stars or NFL stars, I would say there's a decent amount that would look like that. I remember LeBron Most taking BP. I really do. Most, most of them? them? Yeah, yeah, most of them. I do. That, that's the weird sport combo because obviously you've seen baseball, football, you've seen basketball, football, but you never really see baseball, basketball, pro athletes. You've never, not that I know of, right? I mean, I don't, you guy, won't, find a, you won't I, find a baseball player that can't throw a football and that can't catch a football. You won't, true. like, you won't, like, well, look at them. What the fuck's wrong with this yeah, guy? But, but you will absolutely find the complete opposite. And it's just because of. The body mechanics and it's such a if you've never swung a golf club and you have to swing a golf club it is the most awkward thing of all time yeah. I but think i think we could grab him. danny who is a notorious non-athlete he's a little twink and he could step into a cage and have a better looking swing than that like that yeah. swing was horrendous i feel uh, like the average american male and this is bp swing. too like right. i saw lebron take bp and it was ugly but he was still fucking pissing on the ball and jake oh, paul's a, a big dude yeah uh, yeah, just embarrassing, man. He shouldn't have let this video get out. He should have put the kibosh on that one. I wouldn't give a fuck. I mean, Jake Paul has turned in from a YouTuber to a fucking pretty successful yeah, boxer. True. So like, we're sitting here talking about him. He's yeah. doing exactly what he probably wants. To, like, yeah. and he proved like, like, listen, he proved that he could do that at a high level. So, I mean, I think he's okay. Like, if you could do anything at a high level like that, like, all right, so he can't do multiple things. BP so cool. It. BP so underrated. 
I because like you BP. can't as a celebrity it's like yeah go out take bp with the guys like what are you gonna do in football like do dry runs with the like take, get in the wide receiver lines yeah or like hockey what are you gonna lace up the skates in the uniform and go shoot pucks at the goalie like no this is yeah go ahead why don't you go take a couple swings and we know his bat situation like that changes things. I mean, sure, like your so stance too your, heavy. Yeah, your stance and your swing should be a little more sound, but still. Maybe, Do you think he just grew up watching heavy. Jeter and he was just shortening it up, trying to go the other way? Maybe, maybe. White Sox, Dave. What do you got, Dave? I got nothing. Okay. Are you watching right. the video? I am. No, he's in, he's checking his emails. Uh, <laughs> next story here: Aaron Rodgers hates his rookie wide receivers. Uh, he said young guys have to be way more consistent. A lot of drops, a lot of bad routes decisions and uh just running the wrong route uh chief we'll start with you yeah i mean i I feel like this is every single training camp like aaron Rodgers has complaints that kind of go in a cycle so it goes in august he's complaining about uh the wide receivers they can't get on the same page then by the end of the year when things start to fall apart and unravel for the packers in the playoffs then it becomes about the coach then the off season the team's not giving him the respect and the money that he needs so maybe he'll retire maybe he'll go to denver maybe something like that and i feel like we're it's that's just the aaron Rodgers calendar like it just goes in cycles and then the, we're the part of the calendar where he tosses his teammates under the bus see i don't know that he did that right there if, if they are dropping passes running the wrong routes and say, making it, say it to them you don't have to be you, like this is like the belichick thing like do you want to embarrass your young rookie wide receiver teammate in front of the media and just yeah, call I mean, them out for it being shitty or do you want to just be like yeah that was fine today we got things to work on he didn't Next he didn't name any names that i'm aware of at least but uh, like <laughs> he said called them stupid and they had too many drops so I like that's i don't, that's, think, I don't think that's a good way for the for your quarterback your leader to be i mean i'm looking at it right here, and he said, young guys have to be way more consistent. A lot of drops, a lot of bad route decisions, running the wrong route. That's the quote that mm-hmm. John Rich applied to us. I don't see what's wrong with that if that's what's happening. I mean, yeah, you could keep it in the house, but is go. that throwing them under the bus? I don't think so. Like, I would, I think it is. Carl, what do you think, Ed? Uh, he didn't single anybody out, so therefore like, I don't have too big of a deal with it. Um, people just kind of salivate, and they look for Rodgers or this stuff. I know yeah, that's yeah. unlike a take people would want me to say right now. Like, I could just go – Aaron Rodgers sucks because I, I don't like him, obviously. But uh, it's like uh, it's like White Sox Dave. If someone saw him in the wild putting a piece of gum in his mouth, they would just like be like all giddy to get something on video or to get some type of internet gold. Uh, I think people just wait for Aaron Rodgers to say something like this, and it's like, yep, that's just how it works. I think that's fair, and I'm not willing to take the bait because if I do right now, I know that like week seven, the guys he's criticizing <laughs> right now are going to go for like nine catches and yeah, 190 yeah, yeah. yards, and they're not going to be on my fantasy team. That's it's definitely just gonna gonna be, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. every yeah. every person yeah. he's criticized will have. I'm just some ready for this. I'm amazing. just ready for this motherfucker to retire. I'm just ready for him to be gone. <clears throat> I'm just four more years. And, 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 <sighs> How what? I don't Didn't know. Didn't he sign a four year deal? He did, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, last topic here. Uh, Bill Hader apparently is a giant dick. Rachel Bilson is ex said that she misses his big dick. Um what do He's you got think? big dick face. He's got the face of a guy yeah. who's carrying a hog. Yeah, so uh and there's just the permanent smirk on him, like if you ever get a chance to see it, you wouldn't believe it until he actually did see it type smirk. And uh, these guys exist. They walk around everywhere. They're probably in your work environment right now. You might even be on a conference call later with the big dick guy. Uh, the face is like just like a Bill Hader classic. Uh, I can be an IT guy, but I can also be like a salesman. I'm your next door neighbor. Very good vibes. Like he's he's the type of guy you would see like volunteering in the community on a Saturday afternoon at the at the Boys and Girls Club. Those are the guys that are carrying around like you know absolute fucking big ones in the pants. Because they're not they're not carrying. It's not like. It's not like, oh, you got to come see me or I'm at the club or anything like that. He's just a regular funny dude. Yeah. Um, And those are the guys that deserve the big hogs. (laughs) Chief. I feel like being funny and having – a big hog is probably is like an unbeatable combo. Yeah, that's a big – That's a good one. It's very enjoyable for me. It's almost better than than having like a lot of money, I feel like. Like I feel like I now it's like hater can – American Pie. You see how those rumors circulate amongst the women? Right, it, right Ed? Pays off. Yep. But here, I got to. So Kelly Keegs wrote this blog. I I think that her take on this is maybe the worst take I've ever seen. What is it? She basically was like, "How to get your ex back? Go out there and publicly compliment his dick." Wrong, Kelly. Oh uh, no, he's gonna be fucking. He's got. He's gonna have a million chicks yep. lining up in his DMs. Like that is not how you get your ex back. That's how you. 
he might say, hey, thanks for that. Now I got 50 other women that I'm going to bang before you. That's a terrible Peace. idea. However, if she does just want one more bang, it's a genius idea. Yeah, but that because guy could it's get like, that. He should get it any time. But like, no, but like, but like, you know, if you got an ex, it's like, ah, oh, man, that would be great. Just one more, one more, one more go. And like, you're just like, ah, that's inappropriate. Like, I should never, I will never cross that line. She, he could do that now. She fired the first shot. So if he wants to, he what has will a, get this man back? Question mark. The answer is talk about how big his dick is that was so she's the way that she framed it was how do we get him back like relationship back that's how i read it i think if she meant like one more you know one more she, romp she would have categorized it that way and there's a million other ways to do that all you probably have to do is send him a you up okay exactly. and then and then I'd be like yes i am th then that ticket is cashed and this as an as an well, attempt like I, to get the guy back wrong Wrong, absolutely wrong. I'm on I Chief's know. side. He Make just oh he I I remember he just had a new relationship. He was dating Anna Kendrick, but I just saw that they broke up. Oh, that's sad. I love her. Short lived. She's adorable. She's I used to love Rachel Bilson too. Yeah, good for big Bill Hader. I mean, he you know he found a way. Like he, he he's not a great looking guy, but he's funny and he's apparently has a big dick. So it's goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. good for him, man. Yep. I, I like him a lot. Barry's a great show. Uh, all right, that's the rundown. We're trying to snake show. votes in the poll just then. No, the poll's over. Oh, is it by officially the, well, over? by the time this oh, okay. airs? All He's right. from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I feel like that. I feel like that's a like really well endowed part of the country. Like Why? Do you say that? Just because like that's the heart of the agriculture and like the farm fed. You know, I throw the same thing out to Iowa. Like the, it's just like it's just everything's a little bit bigger. Did you see that? Speaking of Tulsa, some guy sent me a picture of White Sox Dave Tulsa, Tulsa Sox Dave. Did you see that guy? No. He looked like White Sox Dave. Just some guy in like a shirt and tie. He was like he looked shirt like and tie. I'll try to find it. He was but a shirt was, and tie. White Sox Dave. I'll have to send this to John Rich. Uh, I mean, this guy was White Sox Dave. If he was. Uh, I feel like it can't be that good of a picture because this would have. Uh, oh, it was pretty. It was like it was kind of like a White Sox Dave like Ben Mintz combination, but. It it was pretty fucking good. Did you Someone tweet tagged out? me in a picture that said I looked like Jesse Buss, uh, like uh, two days ago maybe. Did you see that, Tom? Yeah, I thought that's what we were talking about. That's a that one was creepy. I I, 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 I that, that picture funny. did, but I googled him and other pictures don't at all. It was just like a weird angle or weird lighting or something. But that one freaked me out. I was oh, like, man. whoa. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to find this picture. Start talking. Uh, okay, yeah, I've got a picture. It looks just like Dave. This, uh, this actually, Friday, yeah. this Fuck. Friday, August 19th, 8 p.m., Rough and Rowdy. Yep, I'm Rough in. and Rowdy, Coach Dougs, Alex Bennett. Um, it should be a good one. I, it has my interest. It has my interest as well. Yeah. I'm a little nervous for uh, our girl, Alex, Alex Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. She's got the minute She's fans focused, against though. her now. She's focused. Uh, yep. I'm, we're, we're, we're in her corner. So Definitely in her corner. I'm just nervous for her. Go check that out. Um, oh, that one's from a long time ago. The one that I just sent you? Yeah. All yeah, right. So it was like pretty good. four months ago or whatever. Yeah, I remember that one. That one. That's pretty good. I sent. I emailed it to you. Yeah, that one's a good one. So hopefully that we'll get this and put this <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> this is like, this is White Sox Dave after he's like fathered two children. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's, he just looks fucking miserable. You're right. <laughs> it's pretty good. God damn, is that guy sad? <laughs> it's pretty good. No, it. Don't make fun of this guy. No one's don't making no fun one's of him. You're comparing him to me. Of course you are. <laughs> Why? Because someone objectively this is just has... a guy that's just miserable I, running yeah, the rat but race. You would, if you would be insulted if someone said you looked like White Sox Dave. Yeah. No, I mean, I would, I'm insulted and I do look like <laughs> this guy doesn't even know who White Sox Dave is. He's from but Tulsa. It, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, look at this guy. He. <laughs> he's so sad and miserable and just. We he's don't know giving that. up. We Look at his that. face right here. I, I can't, he's I do in know some that. fucking line, just miserable. He's probably pitting out in that golf shirt. Yeah, and the <laughs> fucking kids are shitting and pissing everywhere and asking for dipping dots at this baseball yeah. game wherever they're at. <laughs> he's a this guy, officer. I bet you this guy fucking <laughs> yeah. shot himself in the face. Whoa. No, he's, a, he's a loan officer for agricultural equipment between two hundred and five and $500,000 for sure. And you just come to him and you need a loan because you got to get a new Sounds tractor awful. or something. This yes. is a guy who just sits all day, yeah. every day, 14 hours. We should get, now, Ed, I will say, I think it is your professional responsibility to have these two on a Zoom for a dog walk. See, I would be more interested to do a life swap 
and give that guy Dave's Air Force Ones. Dave <laughs> takes his Under Armour shoes. And that, that guy, guy has kids. You would you put White Sox Dave in charge of children? For yeah, a, I mean, I don't, I, I don't give a shit. It's for my entertainment. White and have put that guy in the bleachers, <laughs> uh, put a fucking <laughs> Bridgeport bomber shirt on him, and just you know. Do you think we could? He looks like he's probably like. I guess eh, maybe give fucking put White Sox Dave in a fucking Southern Tide uh, <laughs> croquis and polo. <laughs> if and we did a yeah, this guy would be unbelievable. That, that's the like the number one thing that breaks my heart from the whole the the pen acquisition was that the guy the CFO oh, yeah. Dave Williams left before yeah. we could do that. The that's why yeah, <laughs> that's what COVID took that away from us. Yep. The most. Did, yeah, yeah, fucked us. Uh, anything. If we did a uh, life swap with this, this guy wouldn't go back just based on the look. Like, we'd be responsible for, like, a missing oh, yeah. husband in Tulsa. Yeah. yeah, he would. I mean, if he had to do what I do, like, he would be binge shrinking frequently at baseball games. Yeah, then we would and just have two like White Sox living. Daves at the hangup at 3 a.m. Yeah. in Chicago. Well, I would be in Tulsa. <laughs> I'd be in Tulsa. Yeah, yeah well, but you'd come you'd back. You'd come back. Yeah. Well, you oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He would not. He would, he'd be like, Same oh, time, though? This is what I was missing out on. Dave gets out there. She's doing his laundry, fucking <laughs> pancakes in the morning. Dave's like, this isn't too shabby at <laughs> all. That, that doesn't no sound traffic. Too, yeah, that is true. What if this guy got you in trouble, though, if he stayed and he was just, you know. Is he using my identity? Yeah. I mean. You know what to get Dave to stay? Arrested. You know what to get Dave to stay in Tulsa? The fucking 10-year-old boy's like. Can you teach me how to play baseball? <laughs> Dave's like, yes, I'll coach this team. Now, no, this no, is no. how you throw Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma like, right? Well, fuck it. Oh. I think Mickey Mantle was born in Tulsa. That reminds me of uh, he's from Ar Oklahoma. Yep. Artie Lang had a, had a bit where him and uh, Andy Richter, who's from Chicago, and he mm -hmm. banged a girl after a Cubs game, and he thought he, the girl thought he was Andy Richter. So they just, you know, they just kind of agreed, like, hey, just just don't be a dick. How about <laughs> how about at the uh, the live show when KFC was in town? We had, um, oh, I'm having a brain cramp right now. Uh, Nick Hamilton, his brother. Oh, yeah. His brother Absolute was. Absolute clone. Pe looked identical to him <laughs> to the point that people in the bar were coming out asking Nick Hamilton's brother for a picture. And he's just like, yep. <laughs> I, sir, Absolutely. I'd love to take a picture with you. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's the rundown. It's great to be back, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Go listen to Redline Radio tomorrow. Got some great dog walks this week. And uh, we will see you guys all next Wednesday. <laughs>